imagine a nice and benign person who joined the army and went to fight in Vietnam War on the American side. Before the war, he had no feelings towards the Vietnamese. During the war, he took part in military operations during which civilians were killed. He returned from the war as a nice and benign person who is convinced that the Vietnamese are not humans and there is nothing wrong with killing them. How this could have happened? Why he could develop such a conviction? The answer to that is the so-called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is a state of psychological discomfort that occurs in a certain specific situation. When? There are several theories about it. The original theory, formulated by Leon Festinger, proposed that cognitive dissonance occurs when a person holds two or more cognitive elements that are inconsistent with one another. Cognitive element is a term for opinions, observations, beliefs, feelings, observations about our own behavior, attitudes and the like. The higher the number and importance of inconsistent cognitive elements, and the lower the number and importance of consistent cognitive elements, the greater the dissonance. There are two general situations that create dissonance. The first is a contradiction between what we think and some other cognitive element. For example, we like someone and we learn something negative about this person. The second situation is a contradiction between what we think and our behavior. We believe that cheating is bad, but we cheat someone. The self-consistency theory, formulated by Elio Aronson, proposed that cognitive dissonance occurs when we behave in a manner that is inconsistent with our beliefs about ourselves that form our self-concept. The self-affirmation theory, formulated by Claude Steele, proposed that cognitive dissonance occurs when there is a threat to our general self-image as a moral and adequate person who knows how to act in a good and acceptable manner. According to this theory, individuals with high self-esteem should experience smaller dissonance than individuals with low self-esteem, because higher self-esteem provides with a more resistant positive self-image that contains a large number of positive thoughts regarding the self. The aversive consequences theory, formulated by Joel Cooper and Russell Fazio, proposed that cognitive dissonance occurs as a consequence of feeling personally responsible for producing an irrevocable, unwanted consequence. Which of these theories is correct? Research shows that the original theory is still the strongest, but the other theories may apply to more specific situations. Furthermore, the research about those theories discovered several methods of reducing dissonance. When cognitive dissonance occurs and reaches a sufficient level, we are motivated to reduce it and restore peace. There is plenty of methods of achieving it. They can be divided into two groups. Methods that do not change the inconsistent cognitive elements and methods that change one of the inconsistent cognitive elements. The methods are Destruction By simply redirecting our attention from the dissonance, we can allow it to disappear naturally with time. Trivialization Sometimes we can reduce dissonance by lowering the importance of inconsistent cognitive elements. It can be achieved by contrasting them with some issues that are more important to us or more important in general. So what, that I've stolen this apple from a store? There are politicians and businessmen who stole lots of money and went unpunished. Self-affirmation We can reduce the dissonance by making ourselves aware of some facts that are unrelated to the source of the dissonance, that are important to us and that strengthen our self-esteem, like, for example, personal successes or values that we believe in and uphold. This method is the most effective for people with high self-esteem. Changing the cognitive elements if we've learned something that shows that what we think is wrong, we change our thinking. If it was brought to our attention that our behavior contradicts our attitude, we change the behavior. But, as we surely know, it's not always that simple, so the other two methods come to the rescue. Protecting our thoughts or feelings in various ways. Interpreting inconvenient information in a manner that doesn't threaten our attitude. Rejecting inconvenient information. Coming up with excuses for our behavior looking for support in people who share our opinion, trying to convince others to our opinion, and so on. If you've seen my previous video about attitudes and motivated reasoning, then this method should be familiar to you. The difference between motivated reasoning theory and cognitive dissonance theory is that the cognitive dissonance theory focuses on reducing unpleasant feelings caused by cognitive inconsistency. An example of this method is a certain cult that believed that the world will end at a certain date and when it didn't happen, the members didn't admit that they were wrong, but even started to seek new converts in order to garner social support. Changing our thoughts or feelings to be consistent with the behavior. This method produces some interesting effects that go against the so-called common sense. Let's look at several examples. 
you buy a valuable product that you have chosen carefully from among equally liked alternatives. What do you think? Shortly after you buy it, does your opinion about its positive and negative features remain the same as it was before? Of course it doesn't. Too many negative features may force us to realize that we've made a bad choice and that creates dissonance. In order to reduce it, we may start to view positive features of the chosen product as more important, negative features as less important, positive features of competing products as less important, and negative features as more important. That phone has more megapixels? Big deal. My phone has more memory. That console has more games? My console is more powerful. That console is more powerful? My console has more games. This also means that if there is no possibility of returning the product, then it may be rated higher by the purchaser than if there was such possibility. What do you think? If you want to permanently change someone's behavior, are greater rewards for a positive behavior and greater punishments for a negative behavior more effective than smaller rewards and punishments? Of course not. If a reward or a punishment is too great, then it provides an external justification for any change in behavior. I did it only for the reward, I did it only to avoid the punishment. If rewards and punishments stop, behavior reverts back to the old patterns. Reward or punishment that is just great enough to change behavior, but not great enough to provide an external justification, creates dissonance. Why did I do it? Not because of the reward or the punishment, because they were not great enough to make a sufficient impression on me and force me to change my behavior. So now I will convince myself that I like what I've just did and I will not even realize that I've manipulated myself like that. Remember that if you are raising children. What do you think? Does doing an unpleasant activity in order to reach some goal causes people to like this goal less? For example, going through initiation ritual to be induced in a fraternity? You guessed it, of course it doesn't. It's the opposite. It creates dissonance. Why did I do this unpleasant activity? It must be because this goal is worthy of such sacrifice. In effect, cognitive dissonance makes this goal more desirable. Cognitive dissonance can be so insidious that it can force an individual to start to dislike some other person after hurting that person physically or mentally. It's because hurting someone may create a dissonance between the belief that I am a good person and the fact that I've hurt someone. One method of reducing this dissonance is to convince oneself that the other person deserved it. Once we are convinced of that, our opinion of that person worsens. Which brings us to this nice and benign person who fought in Vietnam War. You should know now why this person developed the conviction that the Vietnamese are not humans. Killing civilians created guilt and dissonance, which led to reducing it by dehumanization. By convincing oneself that the Vietnamese are not humans, so there's no need to feel guilty. As we can see, not only convictions shape behavior, but behavior can shape convictions. Our convictions, our attitudes are changing to be consistent with our behavior. It can result in a drift of the border that separates behaviors that are acceptable to us from behaviors that are not acceptable to us. We had been strongly convinced that a specific behavior is wrong, but now the border has moved, so now that behavior is inside the acceptable area. The question remains, why is it that inconsistency between cognitive elements creates dissonance? According to the action-based model of dissonance proposed by Eddie Harmon Jones, cognitive elements can serve as action tendencies. They can provide information about how we should act. Inconsistency between cognitions can cause doubts how we should act. It seems that it is not so easy to act while being aware that some important cognitive elements, like attitudes, that motivate us to that action may be even just partially wrong. Instead of acting while being ready to change our behavior when necessary, we prefer to protect those cognitive elements. This can be especially true when some conflicting issue is at stake and there is an opposite side of the conflict that is very ready to tell us that we are dumb and we don't know what we are doing. It is easier to act while being fully convinced that we are right, but obviously it can make us continue down a path that reasonably we should have already abandoned. How important it is to avoid any inconsistencies is displayed by brain research that have shown that when cognitive dissonance appears, then the brain regions responsible for reasoning are almost completely shutting down. And after the dissonance is resolved, the brain lights up with positive emotions as if the brain rewarded us for reducing unpleasant dissonance. And you, how do you feel right now?